Uh, good afternoon. Um, I'll be speaking on behalf of uh, Shiraz Makar today. Uh, firstly, I'd like to say thank you for having me here today. I'm very excited to be in Seattle. Uh, my name is Astrid Lersink, and I am a junior resident at Imperial College in London. Um, okay, so uh, on behalf of Imperial College today, I will be presenting our paper on laparoscopic surgery for perforated peptic ulcer, an English national population-based cohort study. All right, we have no disclosures. So perforated peptic ulcer is a common general surgical emergency. It carries a significant mortality rate of around 30%, and mortality increases by every hour by which surgery is delayed. Factors that have shown to be associated with increased mortality are older age, significant medical comorbidities, as well as a delay to surgery of more than 12 hours. The literature has also shown a number of benefits of laparoscopic repair of perforated peptic ulcers above the traditional open repair, namely improved contamination clearance resulting in a lower rate of intra-abdominal collections, the ability to be able to confirm the site and pathology prior to making large incisions, improved post-operative pain, a shorter hospital stay, a faster return to normal daily activities, as well as improved mortality. The reduced size of the wound incisions allows for reduced wound complications and as a result improved wound cosmesis. So the objective of our study was to investigate the uptake and clinical outcomes of laparoscopic surgery for perforated peptic ulcer, uh, looking at day-to-day -day clinical practice at a national level where randomized controlled trial inclusion and exclusion criteria do not apply. And we used open surgery as our reference standard. We used the nationwide English Hospital Episode Statistics Database, or what we call the HES database. This is a data warehouse from all NHS hospitals across England that gathers data from admissions, outpatients, and A&E attendances. And this data is then collected during the patient's hospital stay and submitted to permit for payment for care that has been delivered. Our population included patients over the age of 17 years who've been admitted for treatment of perforated peptic ulcer, and we only included those who were identified as emergencies as according to their uh, coding, their treatment coding. And this was over an eight-year period from 2005 to 2012. And the exposure was the effect of a laparoscopic approach to open surgery on, on the treatment of perforated peptic ulcer upon clinical outcome. Our primary outcomes were 30 and 90 day mortality, and secondary outcomes were the 30 day complications looking particularly at deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary emboli, ischemic cardiac events, and pneumonia, as well as looking at the length of hospital stay. The confounding variables we accounted for with regards to patient and disease related factors were age, sex, Charlson comorbidity index score, and the presence of gastric or duodenal cancer. The hospital factors that we accounted for were whether or not the hospital was a high volume upper gastrointestinal cancer center performing more than 20 resections a year, or whether or not the hospital was a high volume emergency center um, admitting more than 23 perforated peptic ulcers per annum. Over our eight year study period, 13,022 patients across England underwent emergency surgery for perforated peptic ulcer. And we can see that by far the vast majority, 12,127, underwent the traditional open approach and 895 laparoscopic approach. But from this graph, we can see that over our eight year time period from 2005 to 2012, the percentage of patients undergoing laparoscopic approach increased exponentially. Looking at the univariate comparison of patient demographics, hospital factors and outcomes, we can see that those patients who are aged over 70, were of male sex, or who had gastric or duodenal cancer, were by far more likely to undergo open surgery, and that those patients undergoing laparoscopic surgery had a shorter hospital stay, so five days versus seven in the open group, as well as reduced um, incidence of ischemic cardiac events, pneumonia, and a more favorable 30 and 90 day mortality. And this is again in keeping with the findings of randomized control trials and case series. 
looking at the multivariate analysis of the utilization of a laparoscopic approach in, in perforated peptic ulcers, again, as I said, we can see that the uh, patient's age uh, and a child's comorbidity index score of more than two um, were associated with a reduced utilization of laparoscopic approach, and thereby these patients were more likely to undergo an open surgery. Um, and the only factor that was actually associated with increased utilization of a laparoscopic approach was the high volume perforated peptic ulcer or emergency center status of the hospital. And again, the multivariate analysis of factors affecting the 30-day and 90-day mortality, we can see that those patients who are, again, age over 70, male sex, or Charleston comorbidity index score of more than two, have less favorable 30 and 90-day mortality. And that those patients undergoing a laparoscopic approach had a far more favorable 30-day and 90-day mortality with an odds ratio of 0.49 for both. So in terms of limitations, confounding factors that were not measured, we didn't look at the size or the position of the perforation or the degree of contamination. And we also did not look at the physiological status of the patient to begin with. Um, and unfortunately, we also did not look at the human and infrastructural resources available at these individual centers. But what is important to note is that we included 100% of all patients with perforated peptic ulcers within this HES database. And this is in fact representative of a wider perspective of clinical practice because unlike randomized control trials, this is data from everyday practice at regular institutions and is far more reflective of surgeons with a wider spectrum of skill. Patients over the age of 70 and with a Charleston comorbidity index score of more than two, as we said, were more likely to undergo open perforated peptic ulcer repair. And this again shows that patient selection is one of the most important factors impacting on the outcome of a laparoscopic perforated peptic ulcer repair. A well-described constraint of laparoscopic repairs is the, obviously the longer operating time. But we feel, obviously, that as this should shorten as, page, as surgeons um, improve their laparoscopic skills and that this may in future allow for a wider patient inclusion criteria. As I said, the high volume emergency center status was the only factor associated with increased utilization of laparoscopic surgery, showing again a difference in institutional operating threshold in favor of laparoscopic surgery. And this is again as a result of increased surgeon as well as theater um, experience with laparoscopy. Uh, and again shows the need for increased dissemination of laparoscopic techniques. So in conclusion, laparoscopic repair of perforated peptic ulcers at a national level is associated with lower rates of 30 and 90 day mortality, pneumonia, as well as a shorter length of hospital stay. And this, the, this study highlights the need for training surgeons at high volume emergency centers. Thank you.